Hello, my dear third year students. I'm glad to see you at least here. Now we have a quarantine due to pandemia of COVID-19. I know that some of you uh, go to your countries and some of you in Ukraine, but main rules for today it is staying home. It is uh, not leave your home without any significant cause. And if you have this cause, you have to use your masks, you have to use medical gloves and sanitizers for your hands. It is main rules. And such uh, big staying home, it is a good reason to improve maybe your knowledge, continue your medical education. Our department is glad to work with you in a Google Classrooms, in the meetings in Slack, and here I'm going to read you lectures according to schedule. And today we have a lectures about signs and symptoms of endocrine organs disease and metabolic disorders. And I divide it into two parts about uh, accents of thyroid gland disorders and endocrine pancreas disorders. It will be two parts of these lectures. In our usual schedule, we have lecture just about diabetes mellitus, about pancreatic disorders, but here, here I have possibility to give you a little bit more. That's why I am include here thyroid disorders, like very, very often endocrine pathology. Okay, that's why in plan of our today's lecture, in the first part, I give you a definition of endocrine sister, uh, we will discuss spectrum of endocrine diseases and metabolic disorders and uh, about thyroid glands. I'll remind you uh, how uh, thyroid gland works. Some moments from history taking, patients' examinations and main symptoms and syndromes of thyroid gland. And second part of our today's lecture will be about endocrine uh, pancreas disorders. I one more time remind you how do pancreas works, uh, what moments it can be in history taking, patients' clinical laboratory instrumental examination, and main symptoms and syndromes uh, from endocrine pancreas. Okay, definition of endocrine system. It is a group of glands, organs that regulate physiological functions by releasing hormones into the bloodstream. Hormones are chemicals that carry information to different parts of the body. Specific hormones influence certain organs or part of the body, such as liver or pancreas. The endocrine system regulates development and growth, for example, puberty, metabolism, sexual and reproductive processes. It includes the reproductive glands, adrenal glands, thyroid glands, hypothalamus, pancreas and pituitary gland. Although distinct from the nervous system, the endocrine system interacts with the nervous system through the hypothalamus, which regulates the pituitary gland function. The word endocrine derives from Greek word endo, meaning within, and krinis, meaning secret. Uh, spectrum of endocrine disease. Yes, from adrenal disorders, main uh, disease, uh, main problems, it is adrenal insufficiency or opposite situation, adrenal hormone excess. It is congenital adrenal hyperplasia and adrenocortical carcinoma. Glucose homeostasis disorders, it is diabetes mellitus and hypoglycemia. Thyroid disorders, main of them, it is goiter, it is hyperthyroidism, opposite to it, hypothyroidism, thyroiditis, inflammation of thyroid gland, thyroid cancer, thyroid hormone resistance. Uh, problems with calcium homeostasis and metabolic bone disease, it is hyperparathyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, pseudo-hyperparathyroidism, osteoporosis, osteitis deformance. It is rickets and osteomalacia, 
from pituitary gland disorders. It is posterior pituitary diabetes insipidus. And from anterior pituitary, it is hypopituitarism, pituitary tumors, hyperprolactinemia, acromegalia, gigantism, Cushing disease, uh, growth failure, and dwarfism. What about sex hormone disorders? Disorders of sex development, hypohonadism, disorders of puberty, menstrual function disorders. Tumors of the endocrine glands not mentioned elsewhere. Yes, without significant specific localization. It is multiple endocrine neoplasia and carcinoid syndrome. Okay, let's start discussing thyroid gland. First of all, hope you remember anatomy. Yes, the position of thyroid gland you see here at this picture, it is under the complex of cartilages. Yes, cricoid cartilage, uh, thyroid cartilage. Uh, under the isthmus, it is placed of thyroid gland. Uh, laterally, uh, it limited by sternoamastoid muscles, right and left. Okay, what is the primary function of thyroid gland? Primary function of it, it is production of hormones. We have two hormones. Uh, main hormones of thyroid gland, it is T3 and T4, and additionally it produces calcitonin. Up to 80% of the T4 is converted to T3 by organs such as liver, kidney, and spleen. T3 is several times more powerful than T4, which is largely a, a pro-hormone, perhaps for even 10 times more active. The production of T3 T4 is regulated by thyroid stimulating hormone released by the anterior pituitary. The thyroid and thyrotropes form of negative feedback loop. TSH production is suppressed when the T4 levels are high. The opposite connection. T3 T4 act on nearly every cells into the body to increase the basal metabolic rate, affect protein synthesis, help regulate long bone growth and neural maturation. The increase of body sensitivity to hydrocholamines by permissiveness. T3 T4 are essential to proper development and differentiation of all cells of the human body. T3 T4 also regulate protein, fat, and carbohydrate metabolism, affecting how human cells use energetic compounds. They also stimulate vitamin metabolism. Numerous physiological and pathological stimuli influence T3 T4 synthesis. T3 T4 leads to heat generation in humans. Okay, here you see the ways, chemical ways of production of T3 and T4. Yes, it is from protein that we named tyrosine by process uh, that named iodinization, uh, we get two types of this hormone. If a uh, molecule of thyrosine include four molecules of iodine during iodination, uh, we get thyroxine or T4. If thyrosine during this process get three molecules of uh, iodine, we get a T3 iod thyronine or T3. The thyroid secretes about 80 mg of T4 in normal person, but only 5 mg of T3 per day. T3 has much greater biological activity, about 10 times greater than T4. We discussed that T4 is just a pro-hormone. An additional 25 mg daily of T3 is produced by peripheral monodeiodinization of T4. Yes, how we get part of T3. After 
uh, iodinization and including of former lacos of iodine in thyrosine, it can be opposite process when thyroid gland remove one molecule and it goes from T4 to T3. Okay, let's discuss functional effects of T3 and T4. What the function of these hormones? And it is very important. It is one of the most important hormones in our organisms. They affect nearly all organs and systems of body. What are the main moments? From cardiovascular system, it is increasing heart rate, increasing force of cardiac constriction, and increasing of cardiac output. More of it, it is upregulate catecholamine receptors. In respiratory system, increase resting respiratory rate, increase minor ventilation, and increase ventilatory response to hypercapnia and hypoxia. In the renal system, it is increase blood flow, increase glomerular filtration rate, uh, in intermediary general metabolism, it is increased glucose absorption from GI, it is increased carbohydrate, lipid and protein turnover, it is down-regulate insulin receptors, increased substrate availability. In oxygen carrying capacity, yes, it is increased mass of red blood cells and increase oxygen dissociation from hemoglobin, it becomes more easy. In growth and tissue development, T3 and T4 increase growth and maturation of bone and tooth, increase growth and maturation of epidermis, hair follicles, nails, increase rate and force of skeletal muscle construction and inhibits synthesis and increases degradation of mucopolysaccharides in subcutaneous tissues. In nervous system, T3 and T4 are critical for normal central nervous system neuronal development in children. It enhances wakefulness, alertness, memory, and learning capacity, required for normal emotional tones, and T3 and T4 increase speed and amplitude of peripheral nerve reflexes. In the reproductive system, it required for normal follicular development, ovulation, maintenance of pregnancy in the female, spermatogenesis in male. You saw that such a lot of function and disorders of these hormones, their insufficiency or their overproduction can affect all systems and nearly all organs in the body. That's why symptomatic of thyroid gland disorders is very, very wide. Uh, okay, what about regulation? How it regulates production uh, of T3 and T4? The thyroid is controlled by two glands, hypothalamus and pituitary gland. Through the feedback loop, the pituitary releases thyroid uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH, which stimulates to release TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce of the hormones T3 and T4 to release into the blood. That's why we have two feedback loops between TRH and TSH, the opposite connection with each other, and negative feedback loop between, loop between TSH and T3, T4 production into thyroid gland. Okay, what's the purpose of our today's, this part of lecture? Yes, and purpose of general examination of patient with thyroid gland disorders. Uh, it is, first of all, general evaluation of health, 
It is diagnosis for disease or disorders of thyroid gland, specifically thyroid gland, and diagnosis of other systemic disease that affect thyroid gland function. Yes, and here you see a very specific picture of thyroid gland disorders. It is symptoms that we name exophthalmos. Yes, it is eye symptoms that we usually see in patients with thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism uh, in, with overproduction of T3 and T4. Okay, what about history taking? Yes, uh, it's gathering of information, patient's narrative, biochemical perspective, psychological perspective, and contexts. And here you see picture of visible thyroid gland. Yes, this symptom we named goiter. It is enlargement of thyroid gland. And here in this picture it is a female patient with severe goiter. Okay, how can we uh, make inspection and palpation of thyroid gland? Yes, a normal thyroid is estimated to be 10 grams and upper border is uh, 20 grams. Uh, usually for not every age people, uh, the upper border is 16 grams. An enlarged thyroid is referred as a goiter. We talked about it. There is no direct correlation between size and function. A person with goiter can be L-thyroid, hyper or hyperthyroid. Okay, and according to World Health Organization, we can divide uh, grades of goiter. In case there is no enlargement, no palpable, no visible enlargement of thyroid gland, it is a grade zero. When we see palpable but not visible uh, when neck in the normal position, uh, it is grade one. And in grade 1, we include thyroid nodules in thyroid, which is otherwise not enlarged. And grade 2, it is clearly visible when the neck in a normal position and is consistent with the enlarged thyroid when the neck is palpated. That confirms as visible as palp during palpation. Okay, to confirm problems with uh, thyroid gland and especially with thyroid gland function, we need blood testing. What should we check? First of all, and more sensitive, uh, it is not level of T3 and T4. The more sensitive, it is level of thyroid stimulating hormone. Uh, it evaluates overall thyroid function and usually use like a screening, general screening about function of thyroid gland. More of it, we usually determine total thyroxine T4 ev that evaluates the total amount of T4 produced by thyroid gland. We can check free thyroxine or free T4 evaluates the amount of T4 available to the cells and tissues. And we can check free 3-iod thyronine or free T3, misuse the amount of T3, its active form of hormone, available to cells and tissues. Okay, uh, well, how can we check the thyroid panel? Uh, if we talked about activity, I said you that T3 it is more active for, but during laboratory evaluation level of T4 it more responsible for thyroid function. Just in some rare cases, uh, it can be isolated changes of T3. In all other cases, the first sign that responsible for uh, thyroid function disorders it is TSH and additionally sensitive T4 but not T3. Uh, okay and what uh, in what conditions uh, it can be? If it, both of them normal the function of thyroid gland is normal. 
if you see the low TSH and high T4, you remember opposite feedback, negative feedback, uh, it is uh, responsible for hyperthyroidism, increased level of thyroid hormones. If you see the opposite situation, uh, the high TSH and low T4, it is primary hypothyroidism. It is the most often situation and endocrinological clinic, primary hypothyroidism. But in some cases, we see laboratory decreases of both of them. It is TSH and low T4. It can be in a secondary hypothyroidism when problem goes not from thyroid gland, it goes from the pituitary. Okay, what laboratory uh, examination? Yes, one more time. High TSH or normal uh, and normal T3, T4. It possible situation, I told you that TSH, it is most sensitive and most early sign of, uh, of thyroid disorders. We name it mild or subclinical hypothyroidism. When it changes, changes just TSH and T3, T4 still normal, they are still compensated. When we see a high TSH and low T4 and low or normal T3, like less sensitive sign, it is usual clinical hypothyroidism. In case of low uh, TSH with normal ranges, still normal T3, T4, it is mild or subclinical hyperthyroidism. Uh, in low uh, TSH and high T4, it additionally can be high or normal T3, it is clinical hyperthyroidism, or we name it thyrotoxicosis. When everything is normal, low TSH, low T4, low T3, it is a non-thyroidal illness. Uh, uh, it is rare cases and most of them pituitary problem or pituitary hypothyroidism. And it can be situation, it's rare too, but possible when it is normal TSH by high, but high levels of T3 and T4. We name it thyroid hormone resistance when it is enough of hormone production but abnormal sensitivity of tissues to this hormone. Okay, more of it we can check thyroid antibodies. Uh, most cases of uh, thyroid function problem caused by autoimmune process, autoimmune inflammation in thyroid gland. And to check and confirm this autoimmune process, we can with a uh, checking level of thyroid antibodies. What kind of antibodies we can check? It is thyroid peroxidase antibodies. Uh, thyroid uh, thyroglobulin antibodies and thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies three main types of antibodies it is additional uh, detailization of each antibodies uh, for example, thyroid peroxidase antibodies, it is more usual and uh, in most cases we check these antibodies because we can see it in the most cases, more than maybe 80% of all thyroid problems, it is Hashimoto thyroiditis and uh, Graves disease, two main thyroid problem and for both of them responsible thyroid peroxidase antibodies. For uh, thyroglobulin antibodies, uh, they can say us about uh, suspicion of thyroid cancer and additionally they can increase in Hashimoto thyroiditis too. And thyroid stimulating hormone receptor antibodies, uh, they additionally can be responsible for Graves disease. 
Okay, we can visualize thyroid gland and most uh, first choice uh, diagnosing here, it is ultrasound. Here you see sonography pictures of thyroid gland. In first picture, uh, you see nearly normal structure uh, thyroid gland. By arrows it showed right lobe, left lobe. Uh, dark colored round in a right lobe it is normal too it is picture of atri and in the middle of it more dark region it is a place of trachea and another picture uh, another picture you can see in the next uh, next image uh, here you see uh, in the left side normal uh, lobe without nodules, not enlarged, and you, we don't see this lobe in the right side. It is a patient after partial thyroidectomy when surgeons remove uh, right lobe of thyroid. We have additional uh, additional instrument during ultrasonography it is doppler investigation yes it is coloration of tissues and blood floor and according to coloration of this blood floor we can confirm autoimmune disorders our suspicion to thyroid cancer and other thyroid problems and pictures i showed you in previous lecture doppler looks like different colors uh, of blood flow from the red till the blue okay we can uh, do a uh, radio scintigraphy scanning uh, yes it is accumulation of radiological ions in thyroid glands and here you see example if in picture a it is normal structure yes some mild accumulation of ions in Graves disease I remind you it is autoimmune disorder uh, it is much more strong accumulation of radioactive iodines in both lobes it is diffuse uh, increased accumulation with any uh, significant localization of increased or decreased accumulations Okay, we can do a thyroid biopsy uh, in patients with nodular uh, goiter. In patients, especially for patients with suspected cancer, we have to do biopsy. And you see that under the control of ultrasonography, it is uh, in the left arm of a uh, doctor. Uh, in computer we see a picture of thyroid gland because usually we do biopsy of some structure not spontaneous place of uh, thyroid gland but some structure or nodule or cyst or suspected cancer or some structure uh, of thyroid gland and when you visualize with sonography this uh, sonography of thyroid you see the structure in computer with in right arm you see uh, that surgeon do biopsy of this place of this structure We can do CT scanning of uh, thyroid gland. Usually, in most cases, it enough sonography, ultrasound of thyroid, but uh, in not uh, some not exact cases when we are not sure what is here, we can uh, like second choice diagnosing use uh, CT scanning of thyroid gland. Yes, and we told that most organs and systems are uh, affected by thyroid gland disorders and on first place we put uh, cardiovascular disorders, like one of the most dangerous and most often problems in thyroid disorders. Yes, and... Uh, 
Arrhythmias, it is one of the more, uh, one of the often problem. To confirm arrhythmia, we use ACG, electrocardiography. And here you see example uh, of ACG in patients with thyroid gland disorders. In a first strip, upper strip, it is not normal. You see that rhythm is irregular. It is non-sinus. It's in such a way it looks atrial fibrillation. And it is often problem and it usual as for hypothyroidism as for hyperthyroidism. And second picture, it is for uh, for example, I give you a picture of normal sinus rhythm to compare with atrial fibrillation. Okay, uh, let's say several words about main problems. Yes, I told you that most cases it is primary hypothyroidism. What the etiology of primary hypothyroidism? Most cases it is autoimmune Hashimoto thyroiditis with or without goiter. One or more times, a very important moment. The size of gland and function of gland do not connect it with each other at all. It can be normal size uh, thyroid gland with hyperthyroidism, with hypothyroidism, each situation. And it can be huge, very big goiter with hypothyroidism, with thyrotoxicosis, with normal function, each situation. And not any connection in size of gland and function of gland. Uh, that's why Hashimoto can be with greater or without. without. Uh, okay, it can be a result of radioactive iodine therapy of Graves' disease. It is inadequate treatment of thyrotoxicosis. It can be result, hypothyroidism can be result of subtotal thyroid ectomy of Graves' disease or nodular goiter. Yes, it is iatrogenic, but it's not a mistaken. Yes, thyrotoxicosis is even more danger. That's why, first of all, we decide problem with Graves' disease, with iodine therapy or with surgery. And if, like a complication, we get, uh, we get hypothyroidism, it's uh, just a result and we just give a replacement therapy for patients. Uh, it can be uh, hypothyroidism, uh, can be caused by excessive iodine intake. It can be uh, caused by subacute thyroiditis and more rare causes like iodine deficiency. Uh, it is goitrogens such as lithium, yes, lithium drug using. It is antithyroid drug therapy, inborn errors of thyroid hormone synthesis. And secondary hyperthyroidism, yes, it's much more rare situation, but possible in our real clinic. It caused by hypopituitarism, yes, abnormal stimulation from upper gives hypothyroidism in thyroid glands. It can be tertiary hyperthyroidism or hypothalamic dysfunction, and it can be peripheral resistance to the action of thyroid hormones. Yes, one more time, problem not in thyroid, problem is abnormal in abnormal sensitivity of tissues to these hormones. Okay, age aspects of hypothyroidism. Uh, it can have early onset, like in childhood, uh, in result of delayed incomplete physical and mental development, maybe development of creatinism. Yes, it is severe form of hypothyroidism in children. More later uh, onset, but in the ants. It usually causes the most uh, danger problem. It is impaired physical growth. And in case of adult onset, uh, fortunately, it is the most often situation. For today, children much more or less suffer from hypothyroidism. In adults, we name it myxedema. Uh, it is gradual changes occur 
like tiredness, lethargy, decreased metabolic rate, slowing of mental function and motor activity, cold intolerance, weight gain, goiter, hair loss, dry skin eventually may result in coma in very severe cases of mixed edema. Okay, uh, during iodine deficiency, uh, thyroid hormone production decreases. 20, 30, 40 years ago, the iodine deficiency uh, was the most often cause of hypothyroidism, one of the most often. And a lot of countries and a lot of regions uh, like uh, suffer from endemic or regional goiter due to iodine deficiency. For today, most countries of the world uh, make prophylactics of this problem by use iodine salt. Uh, and uh, it become enough cause to decrease the rate of endemic goiter much more uh, very very high and today uh, the places of uh, regions for endemic goiter it much more less and uh, it's much more rare cause of hypothyroidism than for example autoimmune disorders uh, what about, let's uh, discuss several, what about iodine deficiency, because it's still present in some regions, especially in regions with mountains. In this case, TSH release increased, like negative uh, feedback, like in autoimmune goetra, the same laboratory situation. TSH acts on thyroid, increasing blood flow and stimulating follicular cells and increasing colloid production. But the only result is that the follicles accumulate more and more unusable colloid, because no iodine for it. If goiter is due to decreased uh, iodine, well, then thyroid gland enlarges. It is endemic or colloidal goiter. Yes, according accumulation of this colloid, a colloid, uh, thyroid gland enlarge, 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 and we get colloid goiter that we named endemic. Cells eventually die from overactivity of the gland atrophies. Okay, one more time, let's stop on main clinical symptoms of hypothyroidism. It is cardiovascular system, yes, on a first place like most danger and most often. It usually bradycardia, but here be attentive. Very often patients uh, with hypothyroidism, according to bradycardia and some pauses in heart walking, got episode compensatory episodes uh, paroxysms of tachycardia and it can be syndrome tachybrady episodes of brady episodes of tachy and uh, in this case uh, bradycardia and pauses they are most often asymptomatic or subclinic but uh, episodes of tachycardia, patient feel like palpitations. And patient come to you and uh, suffer from periodic palpitations, and that's all. Uh, what first of all you see if you think about thyroid gland thyrotoxicosis, but no, it can be hypothyroidosis compensatory to bradycardia. Uh, you should remember about it and confirm, your, uh, confirm the problem by ACG. More of it, it is low voltage of complexes at ACG, it is pericardial effusion, like general edema of body, it is cardiomegaly, and one more simple, hyperlipidemia, secondary to thyroid disorder. Uh, and other systems, it can be constipation, ascites, it is usually weight gain, it is cold intolerance, it is rough, dry, yellowish skin, puffy face and hands, very specific form of face. It is face edema and face like a moon in mixed edema patients. It is hoarse, husky voice. 
and it can be respiratory failure. Moreover, uh, in female patients, it is menorrhagia, infertility, hyperprolactinemia. Renal disorder, uh, it is impaired ability to excrete a water load. It is anemia due to impaired hemoglobin synthesis. You remember they affect all metab metabolic uh, processes. It is ferrum deficiency due to menorrhagia and reduced intestinal absorption of uh, ferrum. Folate deficiency due to impaired intestinal absorption and pernicious anemia. Neuromuscular disorders. It is muscle cramps, myotonia, slow reflexes, carpal tunnel syndrome. Symptoms from central nervous system. It is fatigue, lethargy, depression, inability to concentrate. To confirm diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Yes, one more time, remind that it is decreased level of free T4 at increased level of TSH. In mild cases, it can be normal T4 and increased TSH. Serum T3 levels are variable, they can be normal or decreased. Positive test for thyroid antibodies, uh, because most cases we discuss it is autoimmune disorders uh, and an enlarged thyroid gland. Yes, uh, like in most often cases, Hashimoto thyroiditis, uh, most often it goes with goiter. Uh, decreased T4 and TSH inappropriately normal. Uh, it possible in myxedema. Uh, more rare but possible. Absence of TSH response to TRH in pituitary deficiency. Uh, and one more time. Subclinical hypothyroidism increased TSH, T3, T4 normal. The most danger and most severe form of hypothyroidism it is myxedema coma. Medical emergency and end stage of untreated hypothyroidism. Here you see pictures how an adept can be patient with uh, untreated form of hypothyroidism. Uh, clinically, it looks with progressive weakness, stupor, hypothermia, hypoventilation, hypoglycemia, hyponatremia, shock, and death. The patients or a family member may recall previous thyroid disease, radioiodine therapy, or thyroidectomy. Uh, what else? Uh, it usually have gradual onset. It's not spontaneous. It's not very urgent. It is gradual onset of lethargy progressing to stupor or even coma. It can be marked hypothermia less than 24 uh, by Celsius. Heart failure, pneumonia, excessive fluid administration, narcotics. Uh, on ACG, we usually see bradycardia and low voltage of complexes. We see significant decreasing of T4, increasing of TSH, uh, uh, increased cholesterol and decreased natrium. Okay, next situation, it usually opposite situation, hyperthyroidism, or in literature you can meet it like thyrotoxicosis. Etiology of it, it is second most prevalent endocrine disorder, affects uh, women eight times more frequent than men, may appear after an emotional shock, stress, or an infection. Most often, uh, cause of uh, hyperthyroidism, it is Graves' disease, uh, autoimmune disorder with excessive output of thyroid hormones. Other common causes of hyperthyroidism include the thyroiditis, excessive ingestion of thyroid hormone, toxic adenoma, 
Plumber's disease. It is toxic multinodular goiter. Uh, clinical symptoms. Uh, yes, we have the opposite situation from hypothyroidism. That's why symptoms, they are usually opposite from some of them the same. We will stop on it, but most of them opposite. Emotional. If their patient was sleepy and depressed, here it is emotional nervousness, irritability. We have very specific eye symptom I showed you in the first part of our lecture. It is exophthalmus. It is enlargement of eyes in the anterior uh, way. It is goiter. Yes, for Graves disease, it's usual and possible to diffuse enlargement of thyroid and brood. It is thyroid dermopathy, pretibial max myxedema. Uh, it is heat intolerance, it is cardiovascular problems, here uh, even more usual for than for hypothyroidism palpitations, but we discuss they can be in hypothyroidism too. It is progressing of atrial fibrillation, congestive heart failure, dyspnea, angina. GI symptoms like weight, appetite, diarrhea weight it is losing weight reproductive uh, problems it is amenorrhea oligomenorrhea infertility gynecomastia in me bone uh, problems uh, for hyperthyroidism it usual osteoporosis and thyroid acropachy neuromuscular nervousness uh, uh, it is nervousness, tremor, emotional lability, proximal myopathy, myasthenia gravis, hyperreflexia, clonus, periodic hypokalemic paralysis. Skin changes like pruritus, onycholysis, vitiligo, hair thinning, palmar erythema, spider nevi. Diagnosis of hyperthyroidism. Here we see due to negative feedback decreased TSH and usually high level of T4 and or T3. Free T4 and free T3. If eye signs are present, like exophthalmus, the diagnosis of Graves' disease can be made without further tests. If eye signs are absent and the patient is hyperthyroid with or without goiter, a radioiodine uptake test should be done. Radioiodine uptake and scan. Diffuse increased uptake. Due to Graves' disease, I showed you in diagnostic tests. Uh, okay. TSHR uh, AB is specific for uh, Graves' disease antibodies against receptors. Uh, they may be useful in the apathetic hyperthyroid patients or who uh, presents with unilateral exophthalmus without obvious signs or laboratory manifestations of Graves' disease. Uh, the most uh, dangerous situation uh, we name thyroid storm or thyroid crisis. Sorry, one moment. Uh, what is thyroid storm? If there was myxedema coma, here we have uh, thyroid crisis. It occurs in several hyperthyroid patients caused by a precipitating event such as infection, surgical stress, stopping antithyroid medication in Graves' disease. Usually it goes uh, thyroid storm, uh, it is spontaneous disorder, but it caused by some provoking factor like infection, like surgery, like some other concomitant disease or spontaneous stopping of antithyroid thyroid therapy in Graves disease. Clinical clues of thyroid storm. It is fever, hyperthermia, uh, uh, hyperthermia marked anxiety or agitation, and it can go in most of our cases to coma. 
It is anorexia, tachycardia with going different of tachyarrhythmias, most often atrial fibrillation. It is pulmonary edema, cardiac failure, hypotension uh, that can go to the shock in most uh, severe situation and confusion. Okay, uh, it was uh, main moments about thyroid problems. It is finishing of our first part of endocrine lecture for the uh, third year students. Uh, I will be glad to answer to your question, maybe to read you some comments uh, here in YouTube. I ask you to write your names and groups in comment under, under the video uh, because we want to see who listening in our lecture, who interested in our lecture. And in Facebook it will be linked to this lecture and in comments in our closed group on Facebook. I waiting for your questions, for your comments and all uh, maybe your reaction to this lecture. And see you in the second part about endocrine pancreas disorders.